Hi everybody, it's Camille. This month we are learning about blood vessels and this week we're gonna start learning about the endothelium. And I wanted to go over nitric oxide, uh, how it's made and what it does quickly before we plunge into some more detail. Now, as a quick review, the endothelium is the uh, thin layer of cells that lines the lumen of the blood vessels. So these are the cells that the blood and whatever is being transported in the blood will um, come into direct contact with. So the endothelium really has its um, a lot of interaction with the components of the blood and what's flowing through there. And it can respond to that. And there's three main ways that the endothelium can change based on the needs of the tissue. So each blood vessel is feeding into a particular tissue, so it can change based on that or based on what's going on um, in terms of the blood uh, components or flow. And those three ways are it can change permeability. So the endothelial cells here can uh, become more permeable, meaning they can let th um, things move more easily in and out of the bloodstream. Uh, they can become more sticky and that is a factor in, uh, for example, the formation of blood clots. The endothelial cells can express um, things called adhesion molecules or other types of proteins or constituents that might um, cause platelets or other um, things traveling in the blood to stick there instead of to move on by smoothly. So that's a, a little change that the endothelium can make that contributes to health or disease. And lastly, the endothelium is directly involved in regulation of blood pressure at the local level. So the endothelium, um, you can see, is basically right uh, next to the smooth muscle. And we're talking about, when we're talking about blood pressure, we're really talking mainly about the smaller arteries and arterioles that, that um, regulate local blood pressure. And this is where nitric oxide comes into play. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about how that happens. Now, nitric oxide is a signaling molecule that ultimately dilates smooth muscle, among other things. All right, so when the endothelial cells sense that blood pressure is too high, and mainly they would do that by, um, they can detect shear stress, meaning the um, kind of rapidity at, and force at which the blood is moving along. So they can detect the shear um, stress. They pick up on shear stress, and they will say, wow, that's a lot, awful lot of uh, <laughs> um, you know, pressure that we're sensing here. And so the endothelial cells will make this signaling molecule called nitric oxide, and it will diffuse into um, this smooth muscle layer and cause the muscles to relax. And what happens when... when um, so what happens is that the tissue essentially, or the muscle essentially relaxes. So we've got, if we start out with a blood vessel that has a diameter kind of like that, if it undergoes vasodilation or these smooth muscles relax, then it's gonna have a wider um, diameter. And what that means is more blood flow can come through and the pressure on that particular tissue is relieved, which is a good thing. We'll talk about more about that later. So the next thing you might be wondering is how, where does this nitric oxide come from and what's the deal with it? So nitric oxide is, um, it used to be called endothelial de derived relaxing factor. So if you're reading some of the older literature and you see EDRF, that's the same thing as um, nitric oxide. We just figured out exactly what it was. And it only has a half-life of, of really a few seconds. So when we're talking about nitric oxide, it's not it's not like a hormone that's going to travel through the bloodstream and have effects far and you know far and wide. It really mostly has local effects um, right nearby where it's produced. So um, it's kind of a short-term thing. It is made by an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase, and when we see this ACE at the end, that tells us that it's a um, an enzyme. All right, and there are three different types of nitric oxide synthase. We're not going to worry too much about the other two, but the one we're specifically worried about is one called endothelial nitric oxide synthase, or ENOS, okay, because that's the kind that's made in the endothelium. And let's have a look in our next slide at uh, how that happens. Okay, so I'm sorry this, this looks a little intense, but we're just going to plow through. So what we have here is our blood is flowing. This is the blood vessel up here. The blood is moving along. 
And um, the endothelial cells pick up on shear stress and they say, whoa, that is an awful lot of shear stress. We, I think we need to cut down on that somehow because too much um, shear stress can actually damage the endothelium. All right, so then um, that shear stress will stimulate our nitric oxide synthase and it will produce nitric oxide right here, okay, from L-arginine. That's it. We don't have to worry too much about that reaction. Then the nitric oxide diffuses into the nearby smooth muscles and again through a process that we're not going to worry too much about the details, uh, it will cause relaxation of the smooth muscles and then you wind up dilating just that particular blood vessel where the shear stress was detected as high. And what that's going to mean is that the tissue downstream is going to get more blood flow and that the, um, the pressure in that vessel is going to be relieved a little bit. All right, so that's all good. That's all good. Now, um, so what can stimulate nitric oxide? Like I said, the shear stress, but there's also some other things. For example, cytokines in the bloodstream or acetylcholine or uh, various, other, um, various other signaling molecules can also trigger nitric oxide release. So nitric oxide is really important because it is considered um, a marker of healthy flexibility in the blood vessels, right? So nitric oxide gives the individual vessel the ability to adapt to its conditions. When pressure, when the shear stress goes up, that blood vessel can change depending on what it predicts. So when nitric oxide production is compromised, the blood vessel um, can't react. It gets stiff and it can't respond appropriately. And that means that um, the downstream tissues may also suffer. And we'll talk a little bit more about this as well, but there's, there's a couple different um, possibilities of how this could get damaged. One, if we damage the endothelial cells, then they aren't going to be able to produce nitric oxide as efficiently, or maybe they'll have, there'll be less nitric oxide synthase available. And that can cause damage to the whole blood vessels just for that reason. Um, conversely, if there's a problem with nitric oxide signaling, even if the endothelium is healthy, then that blood vessel can also get damaged because, you know, so anything that's going to interfere anywhere along that process can potentially cause vascular disease or distress. All right. And as I mentioned, the, um, in terms of blood pressure regulation, we're largely talking about the arterioles because the capillaries, if you recall from our previous video, they don't have smooth muscle around them. So there's no, there's nothing to vasodilate, really. There's no muscles there to do that um, work for them. So the arterioles are regulating how much blood is going to flow into the capillaries. Now, in our next video, we're going to talk more about um, the glycocalyx, which is a part of the endothelial cells that helps regulate all this. And it's really exciting stuff. Um, oh, one quick thing I wanted to mention before we, before we end here is that, um, you know, we always talk about nitric oxide and relaxing the smooth muscles, but it also has other effects. You know, it doesn't just diffuse one direction. When the nitric oxide is made in these endothelial cells, it also can act in an autocrine fashion, meaning it, um, can make other changes on the endothelial cells themselves. For example, um, you know, it can work, it can also help change the stickiness of the blood vessels or not. So it, it's not, it's not a sort of one shot wonder type of signaling molecule. We just often think about it as doing this one thing. But again, more on that later. All right, so send me your questions if you have any. We'll, in the next visit, we will talk about the endothelial glycocalyx, which is one of my favorite topics. Okay.